Welcome to this brief demonstration of Dashboard for Microsoft Access version 1.3. We've added a lot of great features to this new release, and we'll walk through several of them. But first, let's just look at a general overview of Dashboard Builder. Dashboard Builder allows you to define multiple different dashboards, each with individual metrics. Let's first look at an or a sample of the Orders Dashboard. Go ahead and launch it. As you can see here, it has quite a few dials that are going to visually represent specific metrics about your business, such as the revenue this month, new customers this week, or orders this month. The underlined hyperlinks here show you that you can drill down into additional information about this metric just by clicking. It's going to pull up whatever form you specify and then bring only that data that represents that metric in there. So as you can see, we were talking about orders this month. Here's the order date, and it's only showing March's orders. You can define whether or not any one of these metrics will allow a user to drill down into more detail or maybe just give them a high level of information. You can group metrics into logical groups such as recent orders, year-to-date performance, revenue, and new customers. But in reality, you can mix and match these metrics any way you like, and we'll show you the administration of that in just a minute. You can set a refresh interval, if desired, to actually trigger a refresh of the entire dashboard on a regular basis, or just manually refresh it. You can also print right from the dashboard. As you can see here, we're combining information from multiple sources, which might be in your Access database or linked SQL Server or MySQL Server tables. Now let's see how easy it is to administer one of these dashboards. Click on the Manage button, and we bring up our dashboard sample. As you can see here, it's actually a what you see is what you get administration. You can very easily edit this entire screen directly in terms of the labels. You can reorder and resort. And then finally up above here you see whether or not you want to have meters displayed or if desired you could select just to have data only. In each of these drop down boxes you're going to pull down what metric you want to display in the, in the space provided. Now defining a metric is easy so I'll show you here. The metric definition setup starts with whether or not the metric you're working with is valid or not. This is important to make certain when your dashboard opens that it doesn't throw any errors to the user. The metric name is what's actually shown to the user on the dashboard itself. You can also have a description that might be a little bit more detailed and when they hover over the metric that's what's going to show up to the user. When you define these metrics you can define whether it's a sum, a count, or an average operation of the data that you're going to look at. You can select either a table or a query and again it might be a linked table to SQL Server or MySQL could be a linked table to another Microsoft Access database or just a table in your database. The date range you can select from a predefined date range or you might want to have a very explicit date range that you want to enter here which you're free to do so. The value field is going to represent what value exactly are you counting or are you averaging or are you going to uh, sum those fields and then finally the date field is what's going to actually be used in order to calculate the date range. Now those are just the basic settings. You can also set advanced settings here such as what format. Do you want it to be decimals? Do you want it to be currency? And how many decimals do you want to show? The SQL where statement is where which is not required but if you have knowledge of SQL you can add complex SQL where statements into the metric to further refine your criteria. Finally, if you're going to have this as a meter metric to show up on the meter you'd want to define a green limit and a red limit. So that might be for today's orders maybe the green limit is you want to have at least 10 and the red limit is if you have two or less you want that meter to show that it's actually in the red zone. And finally, as we mentioned before, you can have a drill down form, you can select from one of your available forms, and that will open that hyperlink so that the user can drill down into for more information. And finally, you can just categorize your metrics as needed. This is helpful if you have many of them. Now the validation button is important because this is going to tell you whether you have errors as you've entered it. Now maybe we don't want to do exact dates, but in this case let's go ahead and enter our own dates. Maybe we just want to have a short date span instead of the pre-selected. Now once it's validated it will actually show you what the value is going to come back with right now. You can create a new one, you can copy existing metrics 
and you can close it. Now in this example, maybe we'll add uh, that particular uh, metric to the, to the meters. And now let's go ahead and open the dashboard and see our changes in effect. Now note that we switched these two groups and here's our new metric with today's orders. And in fact, as you saw, I defined a date range that's not quite today. But nonetheless, we have the hyperlink that you can drill down into the form to see that orders within that date range that I entered. And of course, I'd probably want to rename this metric to something a little bit more descriptive since it's not truly capturing today's orders. So there's a quick demonstration of Dashboard Builder for Microsoft Access. It's a very powerful tool. You can launch it straight from your Visual Basic code if you happen to know Visual Basic, but you'll note that nowhere in here did you have to use any kind of Visual Basic. There are even more powerful features, like whether you enable the refresh timer, whether you prompt a user to actually select a value that will help filter data on the dashboard, such as perhaps you have a number of facilities and you want to create one dashboard, but at the time it's launched, have the user select which particular facility they want to see data for. Dashboard Builder supplies all of these capabilities. You have online help available to you, create as many dashboards as you want, and it can be as flexible as you want it to be. Thanks for your interest in Dashboard Builder, and please feel free to try out an evaluation yourself, and as always, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee on our software.